streets, they go direct, some of a portion of that goes back to the district in which it's operating because they often are causing some of the problems near streets and sidewalks to be used for that purpose. But for this year, uh, that uh, was not the case. 100% of the uh, revenues generated from any surplus property goes into the general fund. Parking validation. Believe it or not, when I um, found that we are uh, providing parking validation uh, to some uh, developers and others, and, and, and probably even some of you, um, if you go to Building and Safety um, and Planning Department, up to the tune, I guess, citywide from other departments as well, $350,000. I've asked that, in fact, we don't validate. In a tough time, we can't do that. Um, also, expanding advertising on our buses and, and trains. Um, our buses uh, are able in the last year, just by adding in the back where we already had hardware, where there was PSAs, we raised close to $750,000 just by using that same place and selling. Um, and I did give DOT a hard time because they told me, we are not gonna, we don't think it's a good idea to do advertising because people won't ride our buses if you had advertising on the back of the buses. And I told them that, you know, with all due respect, I did not believe that was the case. Um, I uh, uh, want to tell you some of the things that we fought for when we found some additional revenue that allowed us to save, for, for example, library Sunday hours and 75,000 additional books, um, $3 million going back to the library department. Making sure that the 50-50 sidewalk program had another crew so that you could do more sidewalks in the city of Los Angeles. Um, $250,000 for Laura Chick to do her audits on the gangs. $3.2 million for park rangers and for maintenance of our um, different parks. Uh, money for news racks and inspectors and illegal sign uh, enforcement and uh, five more um, actual lights, um, traffic lights in the city of Los Angeles. There's only 10 included in the mayor's budget. But as I said, we have to look at some of the structural changes so that we ensure that this does not occur again. And some of the things I want to talk to you about, and some of which were been highlighted um, by uh, Ron um, in his paper, uh, one is overtime. Um, we need to create a clear and efficient and cost-effective policy of over overtime for every single department. And so we are looking at an ASTRO report to consolidate uh, how that is taken in the city of Los Angeles. One major change in our budget related to LAPD, and I will highlight this, is LAPD every single year overspends on their overtime to the tune of about $16 million each year. Now, there's been a debate. The police department says for the last, I don't know, five, 10 years, they have overspent by $16 million because they've asked in the original budget for 1.2 million hours of overtime. And the city, in its infinite wisdom, has said, we can't afford that, so therefore you cannot have that overtime. And guess what? They still need that overtime, they use that overtime, and instead, every year, they come in having to, you know, put their hat in hand, and we have to give them a hard time, when in fact, we should just give them the 1.2 million hours, but say, you're gonna stay within that, and that's what the LAPD did this year. For the first time, the council did that, and the LAPD guaranteed that they would stay within those, that police overtime. The other is the study of, of mission creep. Um, there's a lot of things the city does that we probably shouldn't be doing, and just have been added on every single year, and we haven't looked at zero-based budgeting to say, what does the charter say about what we should be doing in the city of Los Angeles, and what can we live without? Because we don't anticipate the economy getting any better um, in this region. Special events frequent to discussion in council of others. Um, we simply need to be consistent. Um, there is, uh, and the numbers differ depending upon who you, the Daily News said 11 million, the CLA says it's 5 million, whatever million it is, it's too much. Um, and that we need to have a policy um, on the way in which we do special events um, there. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is the fight against uh, gangs. Um, and we had a tough night in the San Fernando Valley last night. Um, as uh, I know the captains know, we, uh, as, uh, Michael Moore and I had a conversation today. It was mostly in Foothill um, and in North Hollywood. I don't think Van and I, you didn't have any of those, okay. There were four people shot in, um, it was uh, in Foothill Division, um, and there was uh, two people who were killed in my district um, at um, uh, and Whit Whitsitt and Oxnard, and, and the Coldwater and Van Nolan was where another um, uh, unfortunately, body was, was dropped. That was not gang related in the sense that the others at Foothill were, were considered. Um, I, I mentioned in, in the budget negotiations, uh, negotiations that we, we preserved money for a controller's audit for uh, the city's gang intervention and prevention programs and how they would be used. And this is really a historic overhaul of the way the city is looking at gangs. 
And I really supported 100% uh, what Laura Chick was trying to do and making sure there was transparency and accountability and putting that in the mayor's office that we could then see having one individual responsible for the gang issue in the city of Los Angeles and to coordinate those various departments. We are facing a gang crisis in the city of Los Angeles, over 80,000 gang members. Um, we lose more of our children to a life of crime each passing day if we don't do something about it. Our old strategies are clearly not working, and so we need to fundamentally change the way we attack the problem. Um, they put a uh, an amount that the gang uh, crisis costs our city about $2 billion each year. Um, we have seen just too many uh, gang shootings and, and gang problems, and as a mother of a, a four-year-old, I think uh, I think of it, although he says he's four and three quarters, so I don't say that, he's four and three quarters. Um, I'm worried about my son being able to get to school or walk to school or where he may be going. And so we're looking at the accountability and oversight. And I had used three motions to really embrace what Laura Chick had done. One was to, um, uh, to adopt the blueprint laid out by Connie Rice and Laura Chick to shift the gang programs to the mayor's office. It also increases the accountability and oversight by requiring audits by the controller every six months for the first two years after the shift has occurred. This will really allow us to streamline the bureaucracy and create clear lines of authority and accountability. We currently spend about $160 million on, on anti-gang programs and really lack that oversight and accountability I mentioned we need to desperately change. That, um, you know, it, there's really been no measure and that we believe that that has to stop now. Um, and I think uh, after much debate in the city council, um, they uh, came together to do that. The second part of the proposal um, that I endorsed and the control of LAPD and other departments to really create some effective performance measures on people that are receiving funding from the city of Los Angeles. Um, and also we're going to re-procure every single contract and to review what they're doing to see that they successfully either help kids get out of gangs or have been able to do some uh, kind of uh, intervention programs as well. Now, um, I think that um, I want to give the, the next is really on a couple of uh, hot issues that you've heard a little bit about uh, today by your speakers. Uh, one is the Vendor of Boulevard specific plan, and, and as I said to Ellen, I agree wholeheartedly not to open that specific plan um, because, uh, you know, the devil you know sometimes is better than the devil you don't know. Um, and there have been several issues that we've talked about related to the specific plan in the last year, probably since the last time I was here. One is the use of the $6 million in the PIA funds, the expanding list of projects for which the PIA, PIA funds could be used, assessing PIA fees on residential projects in the quarter, um, examining the effectiveness of the specific plan in controlling traffic and prohibiting new development in the quarter while we study ways of which um, uh, you know, we can decrease traffic congestion. And so, um, I think that what we are um, looking at is really, uh, you know, the, as I mentioned, the, those, the, which is worse, the devil you know or the devil that you don't know. Um, and so I want to just tell you some of the things that I've asked for um, and that we are working with the Sherman Oaks Homeowners Association and others in, in Studio City, I have to say as well, we're working very closely with them. Some of the things that have come forward. Um, while the specific plan imposes very tight um, uh, restrictions on the uses of this PIA money, we do, PIA is, oh gosh, what is that? Project in, impact assessment. Okay, project impact assessment, okay. Fees, pretty much, okay, money that you get when you build in an area and you provide money. Best Buy had to provide, the $175,000 was a voluntary, but there's required monies that they give. But because a specific plan was specific about where that money could go, there's only 12, projects, I think, within an area in, in, on the specific plan that can receive those funds for some of the traffic mitigation. But we do have $3.3 million um, dollars in mitigation project in, in the pipeline. The money will be used to uh, help synchronize some of the lights and upgrade them, um, several left -hand turn signals, and sidewalk repairs, two new street widings to create new turn lanes, and in order to 